Welcome back to Dano Does Things. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Monstera leaf picture mounted on a canvas using a technique called needle painting or flat felting, which is basically just a version of needle felting but on a flat surface. So let's get started. One of the best things about needle felting is that you don't need a lot of supplies to do it. For this project, you're going to need one sheet of craft felt. I'm using this sort of taupey brown color, and I'm also going to be mounting it to a canvas. This is a canvas that I painted a while ago, but I'm going to recycle it and reuse it. So you want your piece of felt to be able to wrap around the back end of your canvas like so. So however big your canvas is, add about two inches around each side. And that's gonna be how large you're gonna want your felt piece. You're gonna need your felting mat, some needle felting needles, and some wool. This is the Monstera leaf, so we've got lots of different colors of green that we're gonna be able to blend in. And it's also nice to have these sort of colors that make up green, like yellows and blues, to give it some depth, some browns as well, and it's always nice to have white and black on hand. So I've got all my colors there. I've got my felt, I've got my needles, I've got my felting pad and my canvas for later. So let's get started on this project. I'm going to start by just roughly marking the center of my canvas because we're going to have all this extra edge and we want to make sure that when we're doing our Monstera leaf, it stays in the area where the canvas is going to be. So I'm just taking these little pins, they're just sewing pins, and I'm going to put them along the sides of each, of each side of the canvas so that I can have an area in which I know that I can felt and it will still be displayed on the front of the canvas when I put it all together. All right, just like so. So now I have my working area planned out right here and we can start felting. Just like with drawing, it's nice to start with a sketch of what we want to do first. Now, you can do this in pen if you have some sort of friction pen that will uh, erase with heat, but you can also do it with wool. So I'm going to pull out my black wool here and you really don't need very many threads of wool to make your sketch because it's just going to be very light. And so what I'm going to do is very roughly outline where I want my Monstera leaf. So I'm starting sort of with the bottom edge of it here. And these, this you'll be able to pull out quite easily if you decide you don't like where it's going. So just like that, you can start right over, but otherwise you can use just the tiniest bit of pressure from your felting needle to make your outline. Okay, now we've got our very rough draft sketched out here in wool. So I've got my leaf, I have where I'm going to have the little uh, indents on the leaf. I'm not sure what the technical term is for that. And now we're going to start filling it in with color. So what I like to do with needle felt painting is layer a lot of different colors. So if we go in and we just put this green down, say, everywhere. It's gonna look pretty flat and one dimensional. So instead what we're going to do is layer thinner layers of wool so that you'll be able to see whichever layers uh, we put first, you'll be able to see them poke through the upper layers. So you're gonna get that dimension. You're gonna have different colors and different, uh, just a different tone to it depending on what colors you use. So. I usually like to just start playing around with wool. If you don't, 
needle felt in too hard, everything's sort of erasable. So you can start by trying out a few different color combinations. And if you don't like it, you can layer different colors on top and it'll change it up. So let's start layering in our greens. At this point, you don't have to worry too much about sort of defining the outer lines. That's gonna happen as we continue on with our painting and we get closer to the end. Right now, we just wanna sort of fill in spaces where we want color. And I'm not felting it in super hard. I'm just giving it a few pokes all around to keep it down for now. But again, the final processes of felting everything down into place will come once we've developed some more of the color. I love working with a hand dyed wool such as this one because you get a lot of different colors in the one color of wool. So something that is commercial dyed like this color of green, it's all gonna be this one solid color of green. Whereas this one, you're going to get a little variation. So it gets a bit more blue over here and a bit more yellow over here. So you can really change up your coloring just with the one color. And if you're just beginning to start your wool collection, it's nice to be able to have that variation within one skein so you don't have to buy like 12 different colors of wool you can just buy one really nicely differentiated colored one and use it for a bunch of different things All right, that's our first layer very roughly put down. So now I'm gonna actually get rid of some of this black because we're not going to need it anymore to look at the sketch and we don't want it to be in our final painting. So we'll secure the green around there, but then pull out these little black threads. And if you didn't needle felt them down very hard, they should just pop right out. You're probably gonna get some of the green with it, but at this point that's okay because we've got a lot of felting ahead of us to make everything secure and in place. But now the green is giving us a bit more of that outline that we can follow. Mostly we just don't wanna have the black in these areas where we know we're not going to layer anything else. We're not gonna have any other color because we can obviously cover the black with the colors that we're doing but if it's just out in the open you'll definitely be able to see it so let's grab a few other threads here all right perfect so now i'm going to start layering in different colors and when you layer in different colors you really don't need to use a lot because obviously if you use a lot you're going to just start muddling the colors that you have underneath and we want to just be able to still see it so you're going to grab like just a few threads of each color and you're going to lightly felt that on top again it's still going to have that fluffy look to it we're not felting it all down because we're just trying to layer the colors here and we want to make sure that we can go back if necessary you can use your fingers to fluff up the color so that it's not all clumped together I'm going to layer in some yellow now too. So because blue and yellow make up green, if you layer in sort of blues and yellows, it's gonna give the same idea if you're layering like a blue and a yellow watercolor. You're gonna get that color coming through. It's gonna show as green. But of course, again, you're really not going to use a lot of it or otherwise that color is gonna sort of start dominating.
Okay, now that I've done a lot of colored layering, I'm gonna go back in with some of these greens and we're gonna start really defining the edges. So we haven't really been filling out those edges and making them super sharp yet. We've just been focused on color, but we're gonna start doing that now. Now this will give it more of a bold outline when you outline with just one color. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could definitely layer colors for the outline as well. But I like to take these strands almost of wool and really define these edges now. You can see how much more defined this leaf is compared to this part of the leaf. And that's really gonna give us that shape that we're looking for. I'm also gonna go through while I'm doing that and really start felting down some more of these colors. There's going to be a few more layers on top of this, but we're gonna really start looking at what the color composition looks like and how we want to blend it or not uh, as we move forward. So as you can see, I'm taking these strands and then I'm almost twisting them a little bit to give them a bit more definition. Then I'm gonna lay them down along the line and then felt them right along that line. And that gives you the really nice crisp edge. And then when you get to a corner, you can felt it right into the corner and then sort of drag your wool across and go up to the next. All right, now we've got a nice defined outline. We've got some nice color layering in here. We're gonna go back through and do some more full layering. So that's gonna be where you're taking one color and sort of going over the entire thing to give it more, um, monotone is not the word I'm looking for, uniform, a more uniform color. So if you want to do it as like a really super funky Monstera leaf, obviously you can keep it with these colors, but if you want it to start looking slightly more realistic, I do recommend doing this sort of over color uh, with one color. So I'm gonna use this sort of olivey green, which I really, really like, and we're gonna go in through with that. So you can see it's subtle, but it's going to help uh, blend that bold outline in and give everything a nice sort of uniform look uh, without taking away from that color layering too much because we're going with really thin sort of sheets of wool there. You can see it's transparent uh, for the most part, but you're just laying that down and felting all over the entire section. The nice thing about wool is you can almost sort of drag it. So if you find it's, you didn't place it down close enough to your edge, you can sort of use the tip of your needle to just lightly drag it and then push it in right where you want it.
All right, I think the last thing I'm going to do is add almost a bit of a shadow with this sort of darker olive green. And I'm just gonna add that to the bottom edge of each leaf just to give it a little bit of darkness along the bottom to sort of give that impression of a shadow. Okay, I ran out of space on my camera, so I'll go back to what I was saying. Uh, we're going to now felt uh, this just so much because we finished our coloring, but we really want to get that nice flat felted look. So we're going to start by needle felting with our needle in a sort of up and down position. And that's going to really get all the threads nice and tangled together and compacted. And then after that, we're gonna go in with an angle and that's just really gonna smooth out all the fibers. Now, we're also going to, uh, after this, we're going to iron it, which I think gives flat felting a really nice polished finish. So let's felt this down and then we can iron. All right, so that is the final felt done. Now, I think that this is where a lot of beginners, or at least when I was a beginner, I would not do a big final felt like that. And I would wonder why my piece doesn't look as polished. So if you are struggling with your piece not looking super polished, you're gonna really want to give it a good felt at the end and make sure that all those fibers are just set in, poked down, smoothed out, and get those right in there. All right, so now we're going to take this off the mat and go iron it, which is, I think, one of the satisfying parts of this. Here, watch, we're gonna pull this off here. All right, don't worry if it's lost a little bit of its shape uh, from pulling that off. That's what the iron is going to fix. So now let's take this over to the iron. This is what it looks like before I give it an iron, nice and fluffy on the back and a bit lumpy on the front. And I'll show you what it looks like after it's ironed. All right, and now it is ironed. Doesn't that just look gorgeous? It's nice and flat and smooth. 
and shiny on this side and it's also flattened down on this back side so it'll be easier to mount. I just think it looks so cool, so gorgeous. The different colors just really pop, especially in person. You really gotta look at felt art and wool art in person because it really just the texture and the color combos just really pop in person. So let's finish this up by mounting it to my canvas here. So what I'm going to do is center this on my canvas. I want to obviously have the whole picture on the canvas there and make sure that it is centered. Sometimes the felt gets a little warped when you are needle felting. So it is best to sort of go through and look and make sure that you're keeping everything centered. So I, you can definitely um, use like staples or something to keep this really secure, but I am a glue gun girl at heart. So I'm gonna do just the tiniest dab right on the bottom there just to keep it centered and then we'll do a tiny tiny dab up top as well and that's just so we know it's sort of in the right area when we flip it over to do our final gluing so now this is all flipped over and I'm gonna put a nice strip of glue along the bottom edge and I don't want to pull too tightly, but just firm enough so that it's going to be taut without pulling it and distorting it. So we'll do the bottom there. And we'll do the top. Again, tight, but not distorted. And now I'm actually gonna grab some scissors and trim this so it'll be a little easier. And now we're going to do the sides. Now you can fold the corner sort of however you like to fold corners. And if you need to trim this first, go for it. My one side is fine, but we'll trim this side. So what I'm going to do is fold them like so, and then I'm going to cut off this tab here. And so you're gonna to wanna to glue sort of on the inside first. Press those right together. And then we're gonna flatten that. So we're gonna wanna dab under there. A dab under here. And a dab in the center. And that's a fairly neat corner. I'm not gonna lie, it's not perfect, but it's going to work. So we'll do that for the rest of these. And that's it. I think it looks super great. I love the texture and the colors and it's a great thing that you can hang onto your wall, put on a bookshelf and you can really do so much with it. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and if you make your own, please tag me on Instagram at Dano Does Things and of course subscribe here on YouTube to find more tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.